it's it's uh, it's touching sometimes when you hear there are mine, you know, even sometimes stones are crying. Sometimes even when I hear some parts of it, then it's I, I don't cry, I cannot cry, and I will not cry, and I refuse to cry. But sometimes it's almost uh, you know I'm then a control myself, but it's <laughs> Ramayana is extremely touching. It's very humorous. It's very touching. It's tragic. It's it's a it is it's a it's you know it's it's one of the I mean you you have them in you have to say in one sense you know people should be advised do not read Ramayana because it's a you know it it is it's such a book that once you read Ramayana other books are just you find other books pretty boring. Of course, then you have my bar as and that can also work. It's a uh, ordinary literature seemed pale compared to actually what, what you have in, in the Ramayana when you really get a taste of it. And it's and also the amazing thing is one can hear it again and again. One never gets tired of it. It's a uh, it's a thing in uh, uh, for example in India when there are you know sometimes there are. Uh, occasions and uh, there's a whole Ramayan recitation in the village or something like that and and then everyone comes and they hear it they've heard it hundreds of times but it's Ramayan and everyone comes and hears it and they're spellbound again hearing the same pastimes over and over again it's the same, you know it's 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 never it's stale it's always fresh uh, and uh, it's not that the plots are you know everyone know, knows it but you, you, you actually experience the personal emotions that are, uh, you know, that, that's, you know, that the personality is experienced. You also experience them by hearing their mind and become so vivid. So sometimes even there are uh, great devotees of Ram. Like uh, there's one example given in Chaitanya Chaitamita, Lord. Lord Chaitanya was traveling in South India and he came to Madurai. Is, which is in, in, in southern India, and there he uh, met a Brahmana. He stayed with a with, with a Brahmana, and uh, and this Brahmana invited Lord Chaitanya to come for lunch. And Lord Chaitanya came at noon, but there was no lunch. And then uh, Lord Chaitanya said, oh, "There's no lunch." And the Brahmana said, "No, because we're living in the forest, and we just we're still waiting for Lakshmana to come back. He hasn't uh, brought back." You know, all the vegetables. You know, the Lakshmi was always a servant, and he was always out, you know, finding naturally vegetables growing everywhere in, naturally in the forest. He hasn't come back yet. <laughs> and said, okay, he thought that was interesting. And then, then finally, you know, after a while, then then the, the Brahma he uh, rushed and he, he made some arrangement, and then he was serving a lunch for Lord Chaitanya, and then uh, he was serving, but Lord Chaitanya saw that, but he was not eating. He said, Lord, why don't you eat? And this brownie said, no, how can I eat? You know, uh, I just, I just heard a terrible news that uh, Mother Sita, you know, the goddess of fortune and Ram's chaste wife has been kidnapped by uh, the horrible even Ravana. And, uh, you know, just hearing this breaks my heart. I cannot, I cannot, you know, I have no reason to live. I cannot eat anything. And, uh, and, so, the, the, so this Brahman is so much into the Ramayana that you know he, he he's completely living and experiencing it, and of course then Lord Chaitanya he uh, he uh, tells him, but you know if you learn the Brahman, you should actually understand that uh, Mother Sita is completely spiritual. She is the goddess of fortune, and no one who has any materialistic uh, you know taints or impurity can. It cannot even see her, but to speak of touching her. There's no way that Ram, that, that sorry, that Ravana could touch Sita. He could not even see her. It was an uh, it was an illusory Sita that he kidnapped. The real Sita he never touched. And uh, and and Lord Chaitanya explained a little like that. And, so, and, and actually, the Brahmin he uh, he uh, calmed a little down, and then he took lunch, and his life was saved. He didn't, and uh, and uh, and then Lord Tanya's describing. So then he he uh, continues on his travels, 
and he comes, comes further down in, in the south actually to Rameswaram, there's a, there's a temple of Rameswaram, uh, a Shiva temple, as far as Rameswaram is a Shiva temple as far as I know, and there in that temple, he, uh, Lord Itanya, he comes and he meets and stays with the Brahmins there, and they have a, uh, have a copy of a uh, very old copy of the Kurma Purana, one of the 18 uh, Puranas, and they have a very old, you know, in, it's actually the leaves, you know, palm leaves written on, and they, they have this Kurma Purana. And when he's there, then it just happens to read uh, uh, the passage where the Kurma Purana tells about uh, the chaste Sita, how she was never touched by uh, Ravana, but she was, it was just an illusory Sita that. Uh, Brahman he got. So he hears that. And Lord Chaitanya, he, uh, there he gets, uh, he speaks with the Brahman as he tells, you know, there's this Brahman, Madurai, uh, can I have this book? I want, I want this book with me to show proof. And they say, okay, you can have it. Then they, of course, they copy it. Uh, so they make a new copy. And then he gets the old copy, so actually he can prove, you know, it's actually there in the scriptures. And then he brings, you know, this book back to Madurai. And then the Brahmana, he's very, very happy when he meets that. And then he, you know, he, he cooks a big lunch for Lord Chaitanya and he apologizes for the treatment that I gave you last. I was in illusion like that. And, and anyway, so uh, <laughs> that's Ramayana. Ramayana is, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, one gets, can get really drawn into it. This is why it is so, you know, it, and, and, and it's connected because uh, this strong adherence to religious principles in all cases uh, allows it. I'm going to say it's restrictive, you know, if, that you have to one follow these principles. Of course, these people, they, it's just natural. They don't have any other nature or any other inclination. But uh, one, but still, you might think it's, it, it's restrictive. No, it's not restrictive. This allows for experiencing the highest personal exchanges and emotions possible. This is actually. Uh, we, we, we do not understand that in our culture. We think freedom, and then we will experience, uh, you know, we, we, can, we, we just do what we like to, and without any principles and restrictions, and what we feel like, and then we will experience all kinds of personal, you know, exchanges, and so life, our life will be so rich, uh, but the, it's actually, it's un completely untrue. It's, uh, it's actually restrictions that allow us to develop relations to each other and experience deep exchanges. It's just like, uh, I mean, just a, a very ordinary example. You have husband and wife. So, uh, you know, in one, one scenario, uh, the husband and wife, actually they are, they're, you know, they're very faithful to each other. They are always, you know, they, uh, they would, I mean, they would don't even think of having relationship to other men, women, and they always, uh, you know, when, when even they sacrifice for each other, uh, sometimes, okay, you know, I, yeah, I would like to, but actually, you know, it doesn't suit the you, so I will not, I will not do it, uh, and so on. They very actually restrict themselves in relationship to each other. Or you have another husband and wife. Who are so-called free, and uh, you know, he is out in the weekends, and he is uh, out with other women, and she is also, and uh, and uh, there's, you know, they, they don't really feel any particular obligation to each other, and they're not bound by any principles. Who has the deepest relationship of these of these two? It's obvious those who are who have very strict principles and restricting themselves, they de they develop the, you know, a deep affection for each other and deep consideration for each other because uh, restricting oneself is also brings to the point that it's not about me but it's always for the sake of others and this is what allows relationships to evolve but if it's just about you know the so-called freedom that that means what I want the whole thing becomes very you know of course selfish very superficial very shallow uh, you guys become lonely you guys you know we, Lonely, you know, this so-called freedom without principles is actually the formula to be completely lonely, isolated people. And this is what we see in our so-called free world. Uh, 
we see in the, in the, in the Ramayana where the religious principles are, you know, uh, being observed with a vengeance, you know, like nowhere else, but also the relationships that the people they have, uh, that's, you know, they experience personal emotions and exchanges on a level, I mean, often the modern man, when he reads this, he doesn't believe it's possible that there can be such relationships, but we can, if, if one has, one follows this principle, that's a whole message of the Ramayana. Uh, so, uh, so that, that's the mood in, uh, in, 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 in Ramayana, the, uh, the strict adherence to uh, all the principles of, of Dharma, of religion, as a giving in the Vedas, it actually means Vanasram, Dharma, in strictly upheld that all the principles of truthfulness and honesty and, and so on and so on and uh, it's just it, it, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an amazing uh, amazing lila lila means a divine play pastime it's a it's like the supreme lord he comes and there's a whole uh, play like a like a theater once it's a theater play, but it's real. But still, it's like a, 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 an enormous uh, play that has been acted on, in, in, you know, in front of everyone who was on the planet at that time. Uh, and uh, uh, that's, that's, that's what a, a Leela is. It's, it's, it's a, a divine game, a divine play. Uh, and so, so the Ram Leela is a Leela of. It's a, it's a leader of uh, upholding all the principles of Dharma strictly uh, and yeah, um, I think that's what I want to say so far. Sorry, it wasn't really abruptly stopped like that, but I think that's someone wants to add something, or questions? Or... Yeah. Yeah? Uh, you can actually see the bridge from space? Uh, yeah. From India to, to Sri Lanka? Yeah, they, they, of course, I, I said, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I said there, you know, probably that Lanka of today is not the Lanka of, of, of Ravana, but it is a fact that there is a bridge of Ram has been discovered uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, from with satellite photos, there is actually a uh, under the water. You can see it on satellite photos or, that actually there, there is uh, some, you know, some kind of a bridge or a dike or something connecting. And uh, but it, it seems it's 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 not appears to not be natural, really a, a nat natural thing. Something, something is there, uh, but actually, there's a hole. I mean, it's a uh, it, 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 there's a hole. It, 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 uh, it's it especially fishermen. They they know that, and also some uh, open-minded historians, archaeologists. They actually are also, uh, you know, and they have made research that actually uh, in the, the the ocean. Uh, so around uh, southern southern India and southeastern India, actually, there, there are hundreds of ruins and towns out there, very big, magnificent ruins underwater, on something like uh, 20, 30, 40 meters depth of water. You find the uh, you know like, so so there was a seems like there had been some very you know big. Civilizations, Vedic civilizations, and they have, like I said, it's, it's, in this case, both, both Lanka is supposed to have disappeared into the ocean. Also, other southern, other cities in South India are supposed to have disappeared. Because you know, Dwarka, Krishna's Dwarka, is supposed to have disappeared into the ocean. And uh, it's kind of a, a cutting edge archaeology today. Uh, most archaeologists are not willing to uh, 
I accept the idea that perhaps a lot of our previous civilizations had actually vanished into the ocean. But, it, but, it, but it, uh, there is good, I mean, actually, there is solid archaeology divers who actually are finding, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, buildings, ruins, walls under water, and quite deep, deep water. Uh, so Lanka, yeah, the, according to tradition, actually disappeared into the ocean, so it's, it's not that. But there could easily be another bridge, maybe between the present Lanka and the present India Lanka. There's one Balmiki, and there's also Tunsi Das, and uh, there's other Ramayana. But uh, yes, Prabhupada says actually it's uh, this separation between Sita and Ram. Uh, well, at one level, it's uh, you know a tragedy, and also it, 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 it is understood in terms of morality and religious principles and like that. But that's only uh, on the external level. What really goes on is uh, the, uh, the, the ecstasy of separation between uh, Sita and Ram. And we know this uh, is, of course, it's standard. We know it's uh, when Krishna left Vrindavan, he seemingly separated himself from all the inhabitants of Vrindavan, and, but they were put into an even greater ecstasy than when he was present because uh, the feeling of separation is a much more intense experience of the presence of God than when he's there. So actually, he, when he left, he became more present. And uh, the, what he experienced was a, an even greater level of ecstasy than when he was there. So uh, and that's, once it's a little myth, inconceivable, but it's a, uh, it's, uh, yeah. So the same thing is there between uh, Ram and Sita Prabha. Uh, Precisely discusses that point in one of his purports. In the in ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is three chapters on Ram. It's short. Sugadev Goswami says to Maharaj Pariksit, I have already, you have already heard Ramayana so many times. So uh, uh, I'm just going to go give it to you quite quickly. So it's just, it's just uh, covers three chapters. And one purport there, Prabhupada has, uh, talks about that. The uh, separation there is not should not be understood in a mundane way. It's actually uh, is ecstasy between Ram and Sita. Yeah. Good point. Uh, yeah, Mr. Sir, you said that uh, Sita is disappeared into the earth. Yeah. Because you like have gotten enough of the whole thing.
but the whole society, they, 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 uh, there was this trial that you had to go through the fire to prove yeah. the purity. Yeah. And yeah. But that, that was uh, Ram who said that actually. Mm -hmm. Because he, he knew he wanted to uphold the strictest principle. Um, so he, he, he was the one who was in Lakshman and Hanuman and the others and did not ask for it. He did. Um, but this is about, again, faultless. I mean, but they're all faultless. Ram is faultless, Sita is faultless, Lakshman is faultless, Bharata is faultless, Dasarat is faultless. So even Kake is faultless. But she's somehow get covered over for to, to facilitate this whole Leela. Um, so, faultless people, pure devotees, doesn't mean then, then their life just becomes uh, you know, smooth and peaceful and no problems or anything like that at all. It doesn't mean that like, at all. The Pandavas were completely faultless and they had to go through more suffering than anyone else. It's not karma. You, you, you think that they have, uh, they have you know, materialistic souls have karma and therefore they deserve to suffer. And they should suffer because you know, they, they are sinful and therefore they should suffer. Uh, but pure souls, faultless souls, they, they, they are not sinful, they have no bad karma, so therefore they do not deserve to suffer. Uh, so that's a very materialistic way of looking at, at, at it. Um, Yes, yeah, the Pandavas had to go through all these tribulations and suffering because, first of all, how would they have demonstrated their extreme devotion to Krishna if they were no, if they not, had not been tested? It's testing uh, the devotion of the devotees, and if there's no trials and no tribulations, how can it be demonstrated actually how glorious the devotion actually is? And uh, and. And, and the, the, the experience of, you know, on the personal level that everyone has in these great tribulations is, uh, you know, you, you cannot get them when everything is just nice and peaceful and sunny and, and uh, everyone around you are always nice to you and you're always healthy and, and like that. It's, it, Queen Conti prays. Uh, uh, after the battle of Kurukshetra, uh, when things were peaceful and again they were reinstated as rulers and, 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 and like that, she said, uh, she prays that all these miseries come again. Now it's, it's over, but that's a problem. And how can we remember you, Krishna? Because when we are in miseries and tribulations and we are desperate, then we can cry out Krishna with a you know, sincere heart. But when we are bewildered by uh, you know, nice situation, opulence, and we are learned and we are beautiful, uh, then we, can, it's, it's, you know, we, should, we cannot pray to God with a really you know, sincere, desperate, you know, crying out to God. So Kunti says that, that these miseries come again and again because then we can remember you. So it, it's, uh, it should not be seen like in a, you know, the Sita's tribulations. Uh, it's unfair, you know. No, it is, it, I mean, it, this is transcendental. It's, it's not, it's not, you cannot put, put mundane justice on, 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 onto this. Well, I understand that, but, uh, but still there is also something else that maybe we have to learn from that, that not to judge by things so uh, easily. Just like, me, just like, that, like just because like that washerman or whoever is, uh, compared his wife uh, with Sita, like, hmm? is there not also something to be learned yeah. like that? Possibly. I mean, if wives were being judged like that, there would be a lot of wives on the streets. Maybe there wouldn't be anything but wives on the streets. <laughs> they should be so beyond suspicion. Uh, it, 
it's, it's kind of mystical, you know, and it's inconceivable. Because every, I mean, actually, you know, everyone disagreed with Ram. It's Ram who said wanted like that. Actually, everyone else around him disagreed with him, including my sister, his guru. Actually, said no, that is, that's not necessary. And and Lakshmana and and, and you know, and it, it it is a how we apply that in our situation. I mean, we cannot. We cannot just copy that and uh, and just say you know. And one day, if you you know, if you're fed up with your wife, okay, now because you were you know when you know ten years ago, then there was a, you came back late one night. So now we have to. That we cannot do. That's not uh, you know. It's it's a. Uh, I would even try to, to to understand how it applies in our situation because it's uh, that's that's not really the point. Yeah, it's it's a, it's, actually, it's a very inconceivable uh, thing going on. This very last thing of, of Sita's banishment uh, and can be misunderstood in many ways. Monday morally, they would say, "Oh, what a cruel thing!" Uh, but no, spiritually, it wasn't very. It was actually. The, Greatest blessing that was bestowed upon Sita, and uh, and 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 then the other is you know we say but, but if Ram can do I can do also I mean you don't even try to understand it or see how it applies if you ask me. Sita, then she took shelter of the fire god Agni, and the Agni delivered the illusory Sita. And then when the Sita was tested, it was the illusory Sita who went into fire, and Agni came and delivered the real Sita. That was that was actually what was going on. Um, you said Sita is the daughter of Ark, she is the goddess of fortune. Yeah. So is the same person Lakshmi? She is Lakshmi. She is Lakshmi. Yeah. Hi Krishna, thank you very much to our listener Prabhu. Thank you very much to everyone. So those of you who have not offered a like yet, please do this during Gorazik for the next half hour. We will have